morning. Good morning. Sorry, I had to run over and turn the light off quickly a second because otherwise we have this weird shadow from the top. Right. Um, so how are you today? I'm doing good. Doing well. Feeling strong. Yeah. yeah. We didn't get to the gym this weekend. We did not get to the gym this weekend. I guess we decided it was a good weekend to take off. Apparently we did. Well, we, we often take weekends off, but we skipped we a day last week, so we thought we were going to go. Right. And yes, it's cold. That's why I have my jacket on. It's very cold. But So what did you do in the gym today? Today was legs. How was your workout? It was good. Yeah. yeah, I went a little heavy on the leg press. I was happy about that. And then I finished up with a few other exercises. I did hack squats, leg curls. Um, don't help me, don't help me. Oh, yeah, leg extensions. <laughs> and the uh, kick. Oh. Well, that went away for a second. I don't know what happened. Hopefully, you guys didn't get a, a blip. Right. But anyway, so you did kickbacks. Mule, I did. Mule I did. Kicks. Right. So my leg workout today was leg presses, hack squats, which is a machine. Excuse me, leg extensions, leg curls, and the kickbacks, which is the machine where you're basically pushing your leg. Back. I call them mule kicks. You know, you can't see my waist. I thought I'd show you anyhow. <laughs> How'd your back do? Not bad. I mean, it's still a little twingy. By the way, my back was feeling a little twingy this weekend. I don't know if I slept bad or whatever, but um, seemed to hold up fairly well today. And I'm still standing, so that's always a good. Sign. Always a plus. Always yeah. a plus. I did legs today too. Yeah. Um, I started with the bouncing the ball against the wall, which is a little bit of a squat kind of movement. Right. So I did a few of those. And then I did um, a few walking lunges, not as many as I usually do. I only did 90, mm -hmm. which I usually do upwards of 150. But I only did 90 uh, today. And then I did step ups. I did the mule kicks as well. Did, yeah. And then I, did, I have some floor exercises I do for my legs. Um, I did those. And then I um, talked to somebody about birdhouses, so that's not really an exercise. <laughs> that's not. What are you no, talking about? Exercise my jaw. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and no, we're obviously we're fasting today because it's Monday, yes. so we have no breakfast, as you can see. Instead, right. I have my How Not to Die book. Right. Um, and the coffee's the brewing. The coffee is brewing. It's, it's almost, almost done. Yes. 20, 20 seconds right. left. So I'll turn that off in a minute. But we, um, we got a question on Friday about where to get iron in a plant-based diet from Lisa, and so we thought we would um, go ahead and re refresh our memories on iron and that kind of thing over the weekend, and so we have some notes here we wanted to share with you about iron in a plant-based diet. And I'll, I'm going to give you the rough outline. Look, we got greetings from Kuala Lumpur. Hey, greetings. Good morning. Good oh, morning. I should actually turn the coffee off, not there you just go. the timer. I've done that before. <laughs> just turn go. off the timer, leave the um, coffee on. So iron on a plant-based diet. I am going to give you the roughness of it, I guess, or the, <laughs> the outline of it, and uh, Robin will talk to a little bit more uh, detail about it. So uh, basically with a plant-based diet, it is true that the iron you're going to get from plants, your body does not absorb as well as it does with meat. However, uh, it's an important point to uh, mention that women on a plant-based diet have not shown to be any more iron deficiency and have any more iron deficiency anemia than uh, women that are eating meat. So um, not as easy to absorb, but it doesn't seem to cause a problem. Right. Um, another important, uh, important fact to mention is that uh, if you are um, low on iron, you should try to increase your iron with plants. Do not try to increase it with vitamins. All right. Do not is a rough way to say it. Uh, but what they're basically saying is that um, supplements have been shown to increase oxidative stress. So, again, you're, you're basically um, introducing something foreign into the body that is not used to getting to absorb it. So if you can, use plants to get your iron. And here are some plant sources. Let's make it. He asked a question. It says, good to see you both. In spinach, tomatoes, blueberries contain fibers. Yes, yes fibers, they do. and they do have iron, and we're gonna we're gonna get to that. Just right. what what kind of foods do have iron in them? Right. So the health so healthiest sources of iron, and again, our source for this is how not to die. Our our um, dieting and, and fasting. The Bible, Bible we use for right. plant based. Right. It's by uh, Dr. Michael Greger. Correct. With Gene Stone. So I it's a tome. It's a huge book, but I absolutely, if you're interested and you want to know more than what we just give you get this book, and if, if nothing else, read the second half of it. Exactly, exactly. So to the healthiest sources, whole grains, and this is all plant-based, legumes, nuts, seeds, dried fruits. Now, when I say dried fruits, I always want to mention that 
Make sure you're, you're eating dried fruits that don't have added sugar. The only ingredient on that package should be the fruit. Right. Um, dates, figs, raisins, plums. Um, plums. Those are all good sources of dried fruit that have just the fruit. That typically don't have added sugar. There are others, but you definitely have to read the packaging because most right. fruits, dried fruits, they've added sugar. And as I mentioned previously, it's not because they need sugar to be sweet to taste good. It's because it adds weight to the packaging and they can make more money. Sugar is cheap to add. Correct. And finally, green leafy vegetables. So To the uh, point. To the point of spinach, Shan, Sean, kale. I was asking. Correct. Um, uh, greens, any greens. Right. The thing I do want to mention about green leafy vegetables is the darker the green, the better. So the spinaches, the kales, anything that's a really dark green. Iceberg, Iceberg lettuce, lettuce. Useless. Useless. <laughs> exactly. Don't eat that. It's exactly. ridiculous. Um, another interesting point is if you're trying to increase your iron, do not drink tea with your meal. It's an in it was interesting, yeah. Um, yes, uh, it can it can prohibit the um, absorption, absorption of it. Um, however, if you do want to increase the absorption, oranges are a very good source. The vitamin C in orange will help your body absorb the iron. So let's not take vitamin supplements that eat an orange or eat we, have, we have the tiny little clementines. Um, and after a meal yesterday, I actually ate a clementine. Um, so the, the moral of that story is reach for the fruit instead of the tea. Then Is that all you have to that's, say? That's what I have to answer. <laughs> all right. So thank you. That was very helpful. I want to give you a little more of the background of iron and why the iron in meat is easier to absorb, but why there's risk associated with that. So there's two different kinds of iron, and one of them is called um, he. And I'm not sure if it's heme or just heme. It's H-E-M-E, -E, and that's the kind of um, iron that's in meat. Do you want to read that? It says fruits and vegetables only. Yes, we are highly plant-based, so we recommend plant-based, obviously. Right. So anyway, back to, so the kind of iron that's in meat and blood is the H-E-M-E, -E, either heme or heme, I'm not sure how it's, how it's said, um, not my expertise. But that is very, very easily absorbed in, um, in the human body, which is great if you need iron. But the interesting thing about that kind of iron is your body can't regulate it as, as well as it does um, plant-based iron. So the way that our bodies work is we have no way to eliminate extra iron. If it's in your body and it gets absorbed, you're kind of stuck with it unless you go donate blood. Or you know, when a woman menstruates, obviously that, that reduces iron as well. So with plant iron, it's harder to get in the system, but your body's better at regulating. So when they need iron, when your body needs iron, it can take it out of the intestines, and then when it's done and has enough, it can say, okay, no more, and it sends it through. That's true with the plant-based iron. But according, according to this doctor on how not to die, he says that the iron that's in meat isn't as easily to re easy to regulate. It comes into your system whether your system needs it or not. It can't regulate it as effectively as it can, the plant-based um, iron. So while it is easier for your body to use or um, absorb the iron that's in meat, red meat specifically, it's harder for it to regulate and you can end up with too much iron. So what do we say? Instagram, LinkedIn, your videos can go faster. <laughs> <laughs> we're learning, we're, we're trying. We're trying to figure it out. Right. We're not sure how this works. Right, exactly. um, so when doctors say, especially to anemic women, oh, you should eat red meat, that's because it's easy it's um, medically, it's the way they usually go. And, you know, the, the real thing is, is that um, doctors don't get as much nutritional education as you might think they do. So they go with kind of what's top of mind for them, which would be red meat. According to this doctor and this book and everything we've read about plant-based, eating red meat and the risks of coral, coral I can't say it, rectal cancer, cancer um, heart disease, diabetes, and those kind of things that come with, eating red meat um, aren't worth the risk because you can get everything you need from plants. You just have to know where. And as Russ gave, uh, there's a whole list of places that you can get iron in plants. And it sounds like, based on what I'm um, reading here, is that you should go ahead and get it from plants, eat it with some citrus, and it, your body will absorb what it needs and then leave leave the rest behind, Correct. which is Correct. you know super healthy. So we've been doing this for a while, and I I haven't been anemic at all. My, my iron levels are really good. So Correct. Yes. 
So, um, Sean, I was in Washington, D.C. to attend World Bank and IMF's meeting, USA Guide. Yep, healthy living. Good, good job, good job. Um, all right, goodbye, son. Um, so the only thing else I wanted to mention is that, to keep in mind for the men out there, is getting excess iron in your diet is not as important as it is in women. Right, so, and that that's the thing, too, I think that's important about this kind of um, iron that's in meat, is that it... Um, it, men can end up with a buildup of. What does yes. Victoria say? Thank you, Victoria. We did mention legumes as one of the sources to uh, get iron. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'll read that list again quickly. Uh, it's whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, dried fruits, again, without sugar added, and green leafy vegetables. The darker the green, the better. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's what we uh, we caught up on about iron this weekend because we did get the question from and Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for asking the question. Yeah, absolutely. So we did a little bit of research to give you guys some in, insight into um, iron. Ab absolutely, you can get plenty of iron in your diet, and it, it sounds like it's definitely a better source of iron for you because your body can regulate it more effectively if it's coming from plants yeah. than if you get it from meat. So that's something to be aware of. Um, if you guys have any other questions about, you know, basically anything plant-based, to exercise, whatever, we we love doing the research. We love learning about it. Right. So it, that's fun for us. So thank you so much, Lisa, for asking that question on Friday. And I would like to say that um, the information you get from us is our experience and our opinions. Um, and if we get re information from another source, we, we will always, always share reference the source. it so that you can go and look at it yourself. Right. Um, absolutely. And before beginning any workout routine or changing your <laughs> diet, absolutely. Ask your doctor. Talk to your doctor, talk to your medical doctor. Right. So we're going to be back this afternoon because we're going to show you our 500 calorie fasting day meal. Correct. Um, that's our goal this afternoon. So not sure what time, sometime between 2.30 and 6.30. It's been pushing a little later lately. Right. So definitely we'll, we, we will be back. And I want to, when we come back, I'm going to share with you. I had a really interesting experience. We went out on Friday and I was expecting to be able to eat a specific thing because I'd gone onto um, a website for the, their um, menu. And I got there and th it wasn't the same thing on right. the actual written menu. Right. And I was really disappointed. So I want to really share with you, it's the first time that I've been super disappointed about not being able to eat something. So we'll talk about that when we make our 500 calorie meal later this afternoon. Good. So we'll be back with that. Um, anything else you wanted to add? Do you feel like we covered iron well? I think everything for today that we wanted to cover this morning we did. And then okay. we'll come back this afternoon and, and add some more. All right. It's always good to see you guys. Thanks. I see a whole bunch of you out there. And I appreciate those of you who comment and like and share our videos because, you know, it's easier to make a difference if everybody knows what we're trying to do here. Right. So thank you for that. You can do our sign off? I am. Uh, and always remember to eat food, not too much. Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Have a good Monday, guys. Have a good Monday, we'll see guys. you later today. Bye. Bye-bye.